Milestone Advisory Partners. Personalized financial planning customized to your lifestyle. Milestone Advisory Partners, bringing success to your life's journey. Visit our website, MilestoneAdvisoryPartners.com. Milestone Advisory Partners. All right, welcome back. We're grilling with Chef Clay. Today we've got some cool things going on. Uh, we're going to do a simple potato salad. We're, we're thinking summer today. That, it just feels like a great summer menu. So we're doing some potato salad, just simple mayonnaise based uh, potato salad. We're going to do a grilled ham steak and with that grilled ham steak we're going to make a cheer wine glaze to go across the top of that. It's beautiful, uh, summery and then we're going to saute up some sweet sugar peas to put them all together. It's going to be a great show and while we're at it I want to give a big shout out to my guys from Razor Knives. These are beautiful knives. I love them. R-A-Z-A-R knives.com. Love these things. Razor sharp and also want to give another shout out my hair ties for guys. Check them out. TheLongHairs.us. Beautiful stuff. Okay so we're going to go ahead and get started. Put this stuff together. We'll get this potato salad going. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're going to get started with our potato salad. Um, this is a simple potato salad that I serve all the time. Uh, I'm a big barbecue guy back down in North Carolina. Do a lot of whole hog barbecue, pulled pork, you name it. Uh, it's just a passion of mine. It, it, I grew up uh, doing barbecue and uh, whole hog cooking. And this is a potato salad that I use quite a bit for catering events, private chef work, anytime I do barbecue. And it's just a simple potato salad. We're just gonna use some nice uh, little red baby potatoes here. I'm gonna add some color in and some flavor in with a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper and a nice sweet onion. And then we're gonna add some other things to it. We're gonna build it all together with some mayonnaise and add some flavor to it uh, towards the end. So all I'm gonna do with these little potatoes is literally quarter them. I just want to get these nice bite size and I'm going to leave the skins on. You can peel these little things if you want to take your time peeling them. I'm not doing it. The skin adds flavor. Adds another little mouthfeel texture to it as well. So we're just going to cut these down, quarter them up, get them nice bite size. And behind me I got some water already heating up, getting ready to boil these. And potato salad is just another one of those things. Whenever I think potato salad, I'm thinking summer, I'm thinking potluck dinners, I'm thinking outside, you know, just do doing things with friends, grilling meats and potato salad, slaws, things like that. Just makes me think summer outdoors. I've cooked for 1,500 people before down in the Dominican Republic and we made potato salad for that job. We did barbecue for the Dominican Republic Embassy, for the uh, American Embassy down there. And we made potato salad, slaw, baked beans for 1,500 people. I'm making potato salad for about three or four people here, so imagine how many potatoes we cut up. Okay, we can get rid of that bowl. We're done with you. So we've got the potatoes here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some water that I've already got going back here. That'll go a little faster, we'll throw a lid on it and I'm gonna grab our salt. And anytime you're gonna boil something in a, just in plain water, get some salt in there and get plenty of salt in there. If you'll see, I'm gonna put a couple of really big pinches of salt in here. I want to taste the salt in that water. Um, I always tell people, you know, get your, get your water salty enough to where it kind of tastes like the ocean. Um, not maybe not low tide at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, it's salty, but you know, think fresh, oceany, you know, saltiness. Uh, that's that's how I want the water to be seasoned. So to that, actually, let's just bring this pot over here. We're not boiling yet, so we'll bring our pot over, and we'll just scrape all these potatoes right in there. And like I said, we're just gonna leave the skins on everything. And that's just gonna add more flavor, more texture. Okay, we'll bring this back. 
All right, so we've got those potatoes going. Now, my potato salad is pretty easy. They, in the South, when you think of potato salad, you're usually thinking mustard flavors. There's no mustard in this. All we're going to do is use mayonnaise to bind this together. And right here, we're going to add some flavor, some color, by adding the bell peppers, two different colors, bell pepper. This one's sweet. This one's more on the savory side. It doesn't have the sweetness. This is what it looked like when it was growing, and then it's transitioned into this when it got ripe. Same peppers, but this one's just ripe, nice and sweet. So all we're gonna do, this is a little trick. I'll show this whenever I can. I'm gonna cut this, these peppers up very easily by just taking the cheeks off, okay? And by the cheeks, I just mean the round edges here. And that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna cut down, take these cheeks off. Okay, now all I've got left is the seeds. Um, don't throw these away if you wanna grow some peppers. There you go, there's your seeds. We're gonna do the same thing with this green one. Just cut those cheeks off. And you can do this with apples, pears. Um, you can do that with all kinds of stuff and just leave the seeds behind. Don't need those. No good, no flavor. All right, so all we're gonna do here, you saw how small I cut those potatoes up. I kind of want to match that with the size of the bell pepper and onion that we're going to put in here, but I'm going to go just a little bit smaller. So what we're going to do is what's a, known as a small dice. So we're just going to run a knife through these, probably quarter inch slices. That's about what I'm looking for. And then we'll come back and we're just going to run our knife right back through these and just make a nice small dice. I don't want these real big. I don't, I don't want... I don't want you biting into big chunks of onion or big chunks of these bell peppers. I just want them in there for a little flavor and like I said, a little color. So we'll get these moving on over here. I'll probably do up this one here. This should be. Okay, that's probably plenty of the red pepper. We're just gonna do the same thing with the green. Just give ourselves some nice quarter inch slices. Come back, do a nice fine chop. Get a nice small dice. Add that to our plate. And one more, just for effect. And this looks great around Christmas time, doesn't it? Nice green and red. But again, I'm, I'm thinking summertime when I'm thinking potato salad. Like today, beautiful weather outside. Had the grill going, sitting around drinking a few cocktails. Making some potato salad, grilling up some meats. If I wasn't here with you, that's what I'd be doing. Okay, and this is just a nice sweet onion. This is probably a Texas onion. We'll just get the peel off of there, all that skin. We don't want that. So again, I'm just gonna try to match the same dice uh, with this onion. I'll show you a quick little trick. This is something we use in the kitchen to make a dice out of an onion. Got a little skin hanging on here. Get off of there. Okay. Again, we need sharp knives in the kitchen. It's, you definitely need one for this. It doesn't work if your knife is not razor sharp. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make small dice we're going to take our onion, move it to the edge of our cutting board. Notice my cutting board's not moving around. I got it glued down. Okay, so I'm going to take my knife and here I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch and cut into this onion. Come up another quarter inch, cut into that onion. And probably another quarter inch, cut into that onion. And then I'm going to do quarter inch slices this way as well. Just about a quarter inch apart from each other. Okay, now when you turn the onion here and slice down, you've already got your dices, okay? That's something we teach in the culinary school. We try to, try to make things easy for up and coming chefs. So I'm just gonna put this over here on my peppers. And I don't want a whole lot of onion in this. I don't want the potato salad to be onion based. I just want some good onion flavor in there. And so I may add just a little more. That should do me right there. Don't throw this away. I save stuff like this for stocks and stews and whatnot, and I'll just leave the root on, end on it and just throw it in something, bring out that onion flavor. Come back here, check on our water. 
our water's going, our potatoes are boiling. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna boil those potatoes down to where they're nice, tender. We call it fork tender. Take a fork and stick it into potatoes and you could use a skewer, knife, whatever. As long as you can pierce that potato, it's nice and tender. I don't want these things to get mushy. We're not making mashed potatoes. I still want some, some nice pieces of potato, uh, nice big chunks. So I just want them just fork tender to where they're soft enough to make the potato salad but still hold together a little al dente when we mix them with that mayonnaise it's going to make a nice creamy potato salad when we pull it all together so we'll get this going and check it out okay so we've got some red potatoes boiling away back here and behind us all right so i'm just going to check these potatoes see where we're at see if we are fork tender yet Oh yeah, we are about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill the heat on these potatoes. We'll get those strained off in just a minute. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna move on. We're going to make some cheer wine glaze. We're gonna be grilling up a nice, beautiful ham steak in a bit. And while that steak is grilling, we're gonna do a cheer wine glaze to brush on top of that, and give it a little more flavor. So this is one of my favorite drinks, cheer wine. Um, I use it. This is also a base to one of my barbecue sauces. Just cheer wine. We're gonna reduce that cheer wine down just a wee bit. Okay. And to that, we're gonna add probably, I'd say two good tablespoons of just some nice light brown sugar. So we'll throw in probably yeah, two good tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay, and we're just gonna let that come to a boil. Let it simmer down a little bit. We want it to reduce down to a nice syrupy consistency. So we'll get that moving. So like I said, from here, you can do all kinds of stuff. You wanna add some saltiness to this. You can add a little soy sauce. Uh, if you wanna add any other flavors, um, maybe you've got some like cherry jam or cherry uh, gelatin or any, anything like that you can add that to this uh, any type of preserves or jams or jellies would be great to add to this I'm just gonna keep it simple and just use the cheer wine itself use that brown sugar thicken the syrup up just a wee bit so we're gonna go ahead get our grill fired up and again we've got this beautiful cast iron grill pan that we're using today um, does a great job uh, here in the kitchen maybe you live in an apartment you can't have a grill out on your deck or what whatever the case may be maybe you just can't have a grill um, get some one of these nice grill pans they're amazing uh, there there's several different brands out there i like the the lodge products uh, they, they've always done me something something special so to this grill pan i'm just going to add just a just a little bit of canola oil to that. And we're just gonna take a paper towel and we're gonna take some long tongs here and we're just gonna brush this grill. Make sure that we don't, don't have any things sticking. Uh, make sure you use some, some long tongs. You don't wanna get over that heat and burn yourself. So we'll get that nice and greased up. So while the grill is heating up for us, I'm gonna check on our syrup. We're looking good. Okay, so while the grill is heating up for us and we've got our cheer wine glaze coming to a boil, while that's happening, let's go ahead and check on these potatoes. Okay, so our potatoes are done. And again, they're nice fork tender. We're just gonna strain all that water out of here. just starting to kind of fall apart a little bit, but still holding together. So I want these potatoes to stay nice and whole uh, while we make the potato salad. We don't want to make, you know, mashed potato salad. We want, we want these potatoes to still be a little al dente, still holding together. And what we'll do is we'll get these popped in the fridge. What we want to do is we want to cool those potatoes down. We don't want them blazing hot because uh, we're going to be using mayonnaise to uh, build this potato salad. So I want to chill these things down. And we've already got our vegetables ready to go in the potato salad. Check on this glaze. And what I want to do with this glaze, I want to reduce this down by probably half. 
I want it to get kind of syrupy feeling um, where it coats the back of a spoon. If I were to take this spoon and dip it into that, I want to see it coat the back of the spoon. That's the sign of a good sauce, a good glaze, anything like that. Um, that just lets you know that your, your sauce is going to stick to whatever you're applying it to. If I just took cheer wine and put it on that ham steak while I'm grilling it, it's just gonna run off. It's not gonna stick to it. It's not gonna add the flavors that I'm looking for. So we're gonna bring that up to a boil and just let it go. All right, so we're checking our grill. The way I check this grill, I just run my hand over the top. Uh, if I can hold my hand there for five, six seconds, that grill is not hot enough. That grill is hot, I promise you. Yeah, yeah, looking good. So. We got these ham steak. And this is basically a steak that they cut off of a whole ham. We talk in North Carolina about pork butts and different parts of pork. The pork butt is actually the shoulder down to the shank of a the pig, the hog. Um, the hams are actually the rear no, thighs of the animal. Um, and <clears throat> we use, use them in different things. The hams we use for ham. I mean, simple enough, right? Uh, shoulders we use, we'll cook those down, uh, we'll smoke those and make pulled pork out of those. But this right here is, it's just a ham. This is a steak cut off of a ham. You see these all the time and you just walk by them, you never think about them. I walk by them and stop and grab one from time to time. They're fantastic on the grill. They're great breakfast. Take, take one of these, cut it up, throw it on a flat top, sear it really good. It's a little salt and pepper, whatever seasonings you like. Um, cook you up some eggs, do a ham steak. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, my wife actually had one this morning. So we're gonna take this steak and what we're gonna do with it today, we're gonna season it up with a little salt and pepper, pop it on this grill, get some nice grill marks on it. Now again, I don't wanna season this too heavily. All I wanna do is just get enough seasoning on there because I'm gonna be adding the cheer wine glaze on top of it. So I don't wanna get too handsy with the salts on this. We're just gonna add just a touch of canola oil on here and just a, I mean just a light pinch of salt we're not trying to go too crazy I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper and all we're doing here is just trying to wake up the flavors the ham itself already tastes great I like the taste of all the proteins I cook um, I like the flavor of food itself. So most of the time, all you're ever gonna see me really use is salt and black pepper for a lot of things, unless it's a dish that calls for extra flavors. You know, if I'm doing like Caribbean food that uh, just popped in my head for no reason, or maybe I'm doing, you know, some Chinese food, Vietnamese food, whatever, they have flavor profiles on my follow. But for most of the stuff that I'm doing here for you today, it's just simple salt, pepper. That's all I'm really looking for. And we'll grab a pair of long tongs so I don't burn myself. And we're just gonna take this ham steak, we're gonna walk it over here to the grill. And you'll see me do this, just about everything I grill. I'm gonna lay that long side ham steak across those grill grates. So I'm gonna get a nice grill mark on this ham steak. And all I'm doing here is I'm just pressing that down to make sure that I'm getting good time contact with those grill grates so I get some nice quadrillage. That's a technical French kitchen term. You can also call it just cross hatch marks or grill marks. Um, but the, the Frenchy, chefy way we say it is quadrillage. So I'm checking out my glaze. My glaze is starting to cook down nice. We're gonna be done probably here in the next two, three minutes. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Now this ham steak is already cooked, okay? It's a, it's a finished product. I could have taken it just out of the packaging, gone ahead, cut it up, eaten it the way it was, maybe make some ham salad, or maybe make, you know, like a nice pea salad with some chopped up eggs and some chopped up ham in that, a little parsley, a little lemon, a little olive oil, um, anything like that. So that, that ham steak's already done. All I'm doing here is giving it some beautiful grill marks. We're just adding more flavor to this ham steak. That's all we're really doing here. We're not cooking it. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a good flip. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reverse this back 90 degrees. So we're gonna get those nice, beautiful grill marks on this. Nice crosshatch, quadrillage marks. Get that going. While that's working, I'm gonna check on our glaze because we're gonna be using this glaze here in just a minute. 
Once we get that ham steak nice and grilled, Mark, we're going to flip it over. Then I'm going to start brushing this glaze on the ham steak itself. And we're just going to add some nice flavor. You know, our friends here at Cheerwine, this is some good stuff. It makes a great glaze to go with this. And, and again, if you wanted to use some kind of, if you wanted to add maybe some peach jelly or something into that glaze, by all means, go ahead. It's your stuff. You try it. I'm just giving you the basics. Make, you know, do it your way. So our ham steak, I can see lots of smoke coming off this thing. That lets me know we got some stuff happening. Our grill is working for us. And when I flip this over, you'll see the nice quadrilized uh, crosshatch marks that I was referring to. Yeah, yeah. Get that to a nice hot spot on the grill. And again, we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take that length size of the uh, ham steak. And if these were my grill marks, I'm gonna place it at that 45 degree angle. And then when I go to turn it, I'm gonna turn it back 90 degrees. And that gives me that good crosshatch marks uh, on just about anything you're grilling. And this is gonna add a nice little color to this as well, a little red color. And we'll just let that ride for a few more minutes. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. We're just going to take that, reverse that back 90 degrees, get those beautiful cross hatch marks onto that ham steak. All we're really trying to do here is just add, add flavor. Anywhere that the grill marks are touching that ham steak, it's adding flavor. We're getting Maillard reaction, bringing out the natural sugars in that meat, and it's just adding flavor. It's a completely different thing if you were to take that ham steak and just eat it raw. What we're doing is we're adding some flavor. So again, I'm just gonna turn that sucker 90 degrees. And we got some of that good cheer wine glaze. It went on to the grill, so we'll get a little bit of that smoking up, bubbling up. And maybe you're not a fan of like that cheer wine. Do whatever you wanna do. You know, if, if you wanna use some other soft drink or whatever, by all means, use the flavors that you like. I always tell people, you know, don't, don't follow my recipes exactly. I used to tell my students at the culinary school that all the time. Recipes are a guideline. Take it and make it your own. Add your flavors. Do the things that you want to do. I'm just giving you the basics. You take it and go from there. So, our ham steak is done. We've already killed the heat. Got that going. I'm just going to brush it up with just a little more cheer wine. Get that going. We're just gonna let that sit there, rock and roll. Okay, so while that's going, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these potatoes out of the refrigerator. Okay, so we've got our potatoes chilled down. We're gonna pull this potato salad together now. And this is just a simple, easy, flavorful potato salad. We're just gonna get some of our bell peppers in there. We'll come back. Grab some of these onions, mix those in. And I just want a nice balance of all these flavors. Again, I don't want this to be too oniony, if that's even a word. It is now. I'm just gonna mix it up real quick, dry, just to see do I have enough. And I think I want a little more bell pepper. I don't see, you, you kinda wanna see the bell pepper and the onion throughout this. And that right there looks good. All right. So now we shall come to our mayo, and we're just going to use mayonnaise. I don't, I don't put mustard in this. Um, this is just a good, simple, easy potato salad. Very flavorful. I mean, it's literally just a few ingredients, but it's got lots of flavor. It's just something nice and flavorful. So we'll get a little mayo in here, and we're just going to mix this up. Might need a little more. Always add slowly. You can always add more. You can't take mayonnaise out of this. So if you get too much mayonnaise in here, your only option at that point, boil more potatoes, cut up more onions, cut up more pepper, and make a bigger batch. So I'm just gonna slowly add the mayonnaise, and that looks almost perfect. And I wanna kinda stir this, because I want the starchiness of the potatoes to kinda mix in with this mayonnaise and kinda help thicken this, this whole dish together. It's getting nice and creamy. You can, you can start to feel it as you're stirring it that you're getting some of that potato starch in there. It's starting to thicken up some. It's not as loose and as wet as it was just a minute ago when I first added that mayonnaise in. Now we're rocking, we're rocking. Okay, now I'm going to taste this because in any of my shows, you'll look back and go, wait a minute, he's always talking about tasting food. Yes, I am because I want to see 
is this seasoned properly? Does this have the flavors that I'm looking for? And that right there, just let me know, this needs a little more salt. So I'm gonna hit it with a little more salt. I'm gonna add little, just a little fresh cracked pepper in there just for, for some flavor. Okay, one last ingredient, celery seed. You can use poppy seed, you can use all kinds of things. If I wanted to, I could cut up some celery and add that in here as well. But I want the celery flavor is what I'm going for here. So I'm gonna add probably a tablespoon of celery seed in here. And that might be enough. We're just gonna stir it up. And I actually want to see the celery seed in here. So if I don't see any, I know I need just a little bit more. So I'm probably gonna add about another half tablespoon, maybe a teaspoon or so. And we'll just mix this back and see where we're at. And again, I'm gonna grab a spoon, do another quick taste. See what, what just happened after I put all that celery seed in there and that salt, see if we got the seasoning and flavors that I'm looking for. That's it. So our potato salad is done. We'll set that there. We're gonna set this aside. Now we're gonna start pulling this whole thing together. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some peas. Uh, these are simple sugar peas. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna get a saute pan rocking and rolling. And we're just going to get this pan nice and hot. Anytime you're adding uh, any type of food to a saute pan, uh, we, when we're sauteing, we're trying to sear the outside, get flavor by adding some brown to this, cook it through. Uh, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these sugar peas, saute these up, and then we'll pull this whole thing together. It's a nice, beautiful plate. Nice summer plate, ham steak, potato salad, sugar peas, why not? Okay, to this saute pan, add a little canola oil. That's all I need, probably two tablespoons. Um, usually I would add like some olive oil to this for a little bit of flavor, but for these sugar peas, they've got plenty of flavor on their own, so I'm not gonna add any olive oil. So we got our sugar peas sitting here. I'm gonna check our pan. And again, what I'm looking for, I want to see the oil in this pan get nice and hot. If I were to throw those sugar peas in there at the same time I put that oil in, they're just gonna sit in that oil and as that oil slowly comes up to heat, they're just gonna absorb that oil, become greasy. I don't want that. I don't want greasy, oily food to send out to you. I want you to have some nice, vibrant tasting food. So we're gonna let the oil come up to heat. You can always tell uh, whenever you're heating up oil in a pan, uh, you'll see the oil, it'll kind of shimmer, kind of dance across the top a little bit, maybe a little whiff of smoke coming up. Um, that lets you know that your oil's nice and hot. And that lets you know when it's time to throw your peas in. Also, when I add the peas, you, you'll, you'll probably pick it up. Um, they're gonna start singing to me. They're gonna, you're gonna let me know, hey, I'm happy in here. Maybe they're not happy, I'm not sure. But, um, so these are nice sugar peas. These are beautiful by themselves. I'll make salads out of these or throw, throw these in salads. I love these things. Um, they're nice, sweet, uh, got little peas inside. So here's what I wanna happen. I wanna drop one of these in. And listen for that sizzle. We got a little sizzle happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire those all up in there. Set that aside. Now I'm gonna grab a nice wooden spoon. And all we're gonna do is just move these around. Okay. Just wanna get them coated in that oil so each, each one of the peas gets a little bit of brown flavor on it. And we just want that beautiful brown flavor, a little bit of sweet coming out. This is actually gonna pull the sugars out of the peas a little bit. There you go. Okay, so once those things get sauteed, we're gonna be ready to pull this whole thing together. Ham steak, potato salad, sweet peas, can't beat it. Okay, so we've got our grilled ham steak. We've got some sauteed sugar peas. We've got the potato salad that we've made. Let's go ahead and put all this together. So we're gonna pull out. Nice, beautiful plate here. And first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get these sugar peas down. 
We'll add our sugar peas to our plate. These things are so tasty. And notice, I didn't add any salt to these. Don't really need to. If you wanted to at the end, maybe add just a pinch of salt. Um, I feel like they're... Yeah, they're tasty just like that. But since I mentioned it, why not? This will just kind of wake them up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna take our ham steak and we've grilled and we've got that thing nice and pretty with that cheer wine glaze. So we're gonna bring that ham steak over here. We're gonna lay it down just gently right across those sugar peas. Alrighty. And now I'm just gonna add some of this beautiful potato salad that we made. Again, no mustard in this potato salad, just straight mayonnaise. Just beautiful flavors, bell peppers, the onion, the potatoes themselves, that mayonnaise, bringing it all together. All right. Now we'll just take our clean towel here, come through, wipe up our edges, make sure everything looks nice and pretty. I don't want to send out an ugly plate to a customer. Yeah. Okay. So that is our full dish put together. This is our grilled ham steak, our sugar peas, potato salad, and that right there is a plate of summer done Chef Clay's way. Okay, so today here on Grilling with Chef Koi, we have made some great potato salad, beautiful mayonnaise-based potato salad. We grilled up a ham steak, put a little cheer wine uh, glaze on top of that thing, beautiful, sauteed up some sugar peas. It's just a great plate of summer, and it all came together beautiful, looked great on our plate. Uh, while we're here, we just want to give a shout out to one of my sponsors, Milestone Advisory Partners out of Southern Pines, North Carolina. Beautiful people. I appreciate all your help and everything you do for me. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this up for today. Check us out next time. We're going to be putting together more stuff for you, teaching you some great recipes that you can use. Come on back, grilling with Chef Clay. Milestone Advisory Partners. Personalized financial planning customized to your lifestyle. Milestone Advisory Partners, bringing success to your life's journey. Visit our website, milestoneadvisorypartners.com. Milestone Advisory Partners. 